I, I've learned in life that if you don't have a vision and a purpose and, and a reason to get out of bed that is both motivating, inspiring, and, and scary, and causes you to think, I don't know if I'm gonna pull this one off, you don't get out of bed. It, it means you don't stop until the mission gets accomplished, and when the mission gets accomplished, figure out another mission. Welcome back to another episode of The Burn. Now, one of the things I love about this opportunity to be with you today, we are in California, which is Danny Morell's home, way better than when I'm filming in St. Louis. I mean, I gotta tell you, I mean, the, the, the views here in California, just a little bit better here at the Pelican Hill Resort. But this show is all about your heart. This show is all about the burn. And I could tell people all about everything you've done in real estate, growing in Terra Real Estate Services, being one of the top 50 Hispanic business professionals recognized all over the country. It's incredible what you've done, the teams that you've built, literally taking people to 4,000% growth in the field of real estate. So everything that you've done, I know you know coaching, I know you know speaking, you have an incredible resume, but I don't want to talk about the resume. Okay. I want to get down to your heart. I love it. And one of the things That's my that thing to talk about. one of the things that most excites me about the opportunity for us to spend this time together is your story. Mm -hmm. Because I always talk about the burn, right? That underlying white hot reason why you do what you do. Not just why, not just purpose, but the burn that fuels that why and that purpose. Yeah. And I know for you there is a significant story about how you grew up, yeah. what you saw with your two eyes. We share that in common. We saw a lot at an early age. Yeah. But it's your response it's your response that I think is so unique about you. So tell us about, about your burn and, and what you saw with those two eyes. Yeah, you know what's funny? Uh, I think, you know, my, my story starts when I'm 13 years old and my mom and dad decide to split up. And at that point in time, I don't know exactly why this happened, but my mom decided to move us from New York City to, uh, to California. And I'll never forget this. When we got here to California, uh, my mom, she's a little four foot two Hispanic woman. Uh, she didn't know how to drive because in New York City, you don't need to know how to drive. And all I remember is convincing her to buy a car. One of my greatest strengths is I don't focus on the details. One of my greatest downfalls <laughs> is I don't focus on the details. Well, the car was a stick shift car and we didn't realize it. So my mom not only did not know how to drive, but on top of that, she now has to learn how to drive a stick shift. So, you know, if the road is like this, we're good. But if we're at a stop sign and the road is like this, we're bad because the clutch would have to, you know, would pop into gear and she'd start panicking. She's just a very nervous woman as it is. And so if you could imagine this, at 13 years old, I was driving my family around illegally, obviously. I think of my son, my son is 12 years old. There's no way in hell he'd be driving us around, but let, let, that's, that's just what you have to do, you know? When you're faced with adversity, you gotta make a decision as to how you're going to respond, like what you said. And I just remember responding like I knew how. I just instinctively got in the car and said, Mom, I got this. I learned how to drive, and sure enough, from 13 to 16, I was the guy that was driving the family around. There was no dad, so that wasn't an option. Mom couldn't drive, that wasn't an option. I was the oldest brother, I had to make it happen, you know? It's incredible. Yeah. And so let's talk about a word, right, that probably comes from having to, to see and to fight and to push, relentless. Yeah. So relentless happens to be one of my favorite words, yeah. okay? Yeah. And here we are in Los Angeles. Uh -huh. So I, I've worked behind the scenes and in front of the scenes with the Los Angeles Rams the last two years. And their strength coach, Ted Rath, who's now with the Philadelphia Eagles, he had a burn episode that we did together. Okay. And Relentless, when he and I would talk about Relentless, he goes, man, I'm gonna start sharing that with the team consistently. Yeah. So from the Super Bowl run, to, so they love that word Relentless. Yeah. What is it about that word? And not talking about the conference, but what is it about that word? I see it on your wrist, just yeah. like Legacy is for me. Yeah. Tell me about that word Relentless. What does that mean to you? It, it means you don't stop until the mission gets accomplished. And when the mission gets accomplished, figure out another mission. I, I've learned in life that if you don't have a vision and a purpose and, and a reason to get out of bed that is both motivating, inspiring, and, and scary, and causes you to think, I don't know if I'm gonna pull this one off, you don't get out of bed. You, you just don't do it, right? And so what I have found is always found kind of like a carrot to chase. So for example, the first carrot I ever chased was buying my mom a house by the time I was 21 years old. 
I graduate mm. high school. We're living in a crummy apartment. We're in the ghetto here in Southern California. And I think to myself, you know, a hero ain't coming and no one's gonna come rescue us. So I look around and I think, I guess the guy that's gotta rescue us is us, you know? I had a little brother at the mm. time. I didn't want him growing up through what I had to grow up through. And so I just made a decision at 18, I was gonna buy us a house by the time I was 21. And so I became relentless about that goal. So relentless, and this is very important. When you want to achieve great things in life, you've got to realize that human beings as a whole don't like it when people achieve greatness. They don't because it makes them uncomfortable. Yeah. They want to grab you and put you back in their little box of normality. And so what I started realizing is that no one in my family at the time owned a home. There was only one aunt that owned the home and she was obviously the crazy one because there's something, <laughs> there's gotta be something wrong with you if you're making a lot of money and yeah. we're not making money, right? And so I was so relentless, I, I had to realize and make a tough choice. You know, I had to slowly put aside any negativity, even if it came from the people that I love because I had to stay focused on the mission at hand and sure enough, by the time I was 21, we bought us a house. Why? I made tough decisions, tough sacrifices, and more than anything, I was relentless about it. And that's been a word that has really driven me my entire life. And if you think about it, it's the word that drives all winners and all peak performers. So you've developed, you've coached all these individuals in real estate, right? And it really started with you figuring out, I'm buying this house, that's how it right? It, it's truly incredible when, when you think about what you've done. So now let's, let's pull this forward. You think about relentless, you think about everything that you've done. I always talk about standard over feelings. Don't allow your feelings to dictate how you show up. I know you're an Alabama Crimson Tide football fan, which I love, yeah. getting ready to start my third season with the team. And standard over feelings is one of the things that resonated with the team. So whether it's business or sports, the mindset that you've taken to everybody that you've helped develop their real estate practices, it's not what you sold last week. It's not what you think you're going to say. It's what are you plan on doing today? Right. And what I think is so unique is not only have you developed others in real estate, now you've developed a conference and a brand all around Relentless. Yeah. And so I'm fired up to have the opportunity to spend yeah, time with everybody be because I think we all know innately, here's what we need to do. What are the reasons why we hold back? Oftentimes it's our feelings. But when you say, here's the standard, I want to dominate it as you've done. It's incredible what we can accomplish in our lives. Absolutely. And so now you, from your recognition to every, the awards you've won as a CEO, you've now built this brand, this conference. Now here's a special thing about this conference, and many people know this, right. but Kobe Bryant. Yeah, yeah. Kobe Bryant, one of the last conferences that he ever spoke at, maybe the last. One of the final two. One of the final two yeah. conferences he ever spoke at right. was Relentless. Yeah. So tell me about your experience with Kobe. Wow. Uh, I'll tell you, yeah. I, I don't ever get lost for words very often, but you know, I just, I just think back to that time. I mean, I can just remember, you know, we've had a lot of people speak at our event. And one of the things that I remember is that, you know, this was extra special for me. And it was extra special for me because you know, secretly, I, I was really doing this for my little brother. You know, like mm. I, I know my brother loves Kobe, and uh, and you know, I just love him so much. I, I knew it was one of his. He literally wrote it on his on his vision board that someday he was going to meet Kobe. Oh you know? wow! And so uh, I don't even think he knows that. But um, but that's secretly why I did it. It's secretly why I brought A Rod the year before. But Kobe was extra extra special, and he was extra special because, to me. Kobe was on another level. So for us, it's like, it was just bringing the best of the best to the event. And at the same time, being that I had experienced interviewing and, 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 and being around other celebrities at the event, I thought this guy's ego is gonna be bigger than anything I've ever seen in my life, right? Because we've experienced it all. Sure enough, we walk into the room, and I'll never forget, he, he, he walks into the room, and I just see his, his silhouette, he's wearing some, some incredible sunglasses. He takes them off, he says, what's up, man, my name is Kobe. And just the way oh, he said wow. the word, what's up, man, there was just something about it. I, we, it, we instantly went from this to, hey, hey, what's up, man, how are you, you know? And, and mm. he really just showed who he was to us in, in that initial meeting. Extreme humility. Ex 
just a, he was just another human being, man. He was just another human being that was relentless about his approach to winning, is what it was. And it was such a great moment for us in that conference, because when I brought him out, the entire crowd, we had just spent three full days learning to master emotions, master mindset, master lead generation. Now we were here to master the mama mentality, you know? Mm. And, and what was so special for us is that what Kobe represented to us in that moment together, right? In this moment in time that the universe brought together, which was so special, not only winning, but being a great human being while you're winning. You know, he changed our lives forever because, you know, from the outside looking in, you don't really get to know a person until you really get to meet him. He was the kindest, humblest, most awesome, most energetic, most just a beautiful man is what he was. He was just a beautiful human being. And, you know, so often, Ben, we get so lost in, you know, success and what that means and showing people that we got money and that we got... Kobe wasn't that guy. I'll never forget this. I was looking over at him and, and he was just wearing a little, you know, Apple uh, watch. And he, he was just, he's just a one. It's just a wonderful human being, man. I just can't say enough. He really was. It's actually, I love hearing all those words that you're saying about him, but it's what's in your eyes right now. Yeah, yeah. I can see in your eyes yeah, what that crazy. interaction meant to you. Yeah. And that's probably some of for your brother, but it's also some of your courage to have built what you've done to give that experience to others, but also that, that experience for you. You know, man, I got to tell you, and it's like, I keep wanting to look at Isaac because Isaac is, you know, one of my great friends. He's our cameraman. But even Isaac, like when, when, when he passed, we all just felt like, you know, crushed because, I mean, I'll tell you a little story. Uh, you know, my, my son at the very end, you know, this is after Kobe did the, the handshakes with everybody, the meet and greet. It was in his contract. He was only mm. supposed to meet and greet a certain amount of people. It was just so interesting just to see his complete care for people. My son pulls up, and, and I, we have this recorded. My son pulls mm. up and says, hey, Kobe, could, could you do a video for my friends? He goes, sure, little man, what's up? Kobe, like this giant, you know, my, my, my kid is 12, <laughs> right? This giant bends down, right? He bends over, and, and he's looking into the cell phone, and my son is just literally, he's a 12-year-old boy, and I'm not the tallest guy in the world, right? So, so you could imagine how, how tall my son is, right? He's just holding it right here, shoulder level, and Kobe is literally like this, bent over, and, and my son is telling him, say hi to so-and-so, to so-and-so, and so-and-so, and Kobe's like, okay, uh, so-and-so, so-and-so, and so-and-so. Did I get it right? Yeah, he goes, hey man, I just wanted to tell you guys what's up, man. We missed you guys here at the event, so forth and so on. And, and he asked my son, did I get it right? He says, yeah, man, thank you. And my son's nervous, he just walks away, you know? And here he is, Kobe's just, just, just being, just, like I said, he's just a beautiful human being, man. Beautiful human being. Yeah. So here, here's what I'll share, that it's, I'm gonna make a common connection between you and Kobe. Can I say something? Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and people with that tragedy wonder, why did it happen? You know, and, and we all ask that and you know, I'm gonna say this, and I'm gonna say this to the men out there because you, you, you mentioned heart. All around the planet, you saw men, right? Breaking down and realizing maybe some of their faults and some of the people that they had hurt and reconnecting with people, right? I've heard of so many people come and say, you know what's crazy when it happened? I reconnected with my daughter. I reconnected with my son. I reconnected, I mended a relationship. I know I did that. I know there were several people in my life where I was like, listen, whatever happened, man, I'm sorry. I'll take the blame. And, and I feel like, you know, in some way, shape or form for us men who, who, who typically work out of here, you know, one of the greatest journeys it said is, is to take that, 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 that journey from the mind to the heart. And I think that's what Kobe helped us do. He helped us feel again. He helped us reconnect with our heart, man. I really, I really do. Maybe that, maybe that's one of the reasons why. I don't know. Well, I can tell from leading up to our interactions, from online to, to now, you lead from your heart. Yeah, yeah. There's no doubt about it. And interactions, raising three children, right? Mm -hmm. Beautiful bride, yeah. you lead from your heart. Yeah. And the emotion that I saw in your eyes talking about Kobe, you lead from your heart. And that's what I love about life is how the world we just brought together. Yeah. 
And so I appreciate you sharing really that relentless burn, not just the burn with Danny Morell, it's that relentless burn yeah. that lies inside of you. And I can't wait to have the opportunity to share with all of the incredible individuals that you touch every single year, that burn that lies inside of me yeah. and, to, and to cut that loose. I think we're gonna have an incredible time, but thank you for spending this time with us and for sharing your heart and sharing your emotion and that relentless mindset. I appreciate it. I appreciate thank you. you.